I have a really interesting day ahead of me. Oh my god, I have to check that I don't have like beetroot on my mouth. Oh my god, how embarrassing. <laughs> Last week I was in town and I met these two guys and uh, one thing led to another and we were talking about God for over an hour. Turns out they're Mormons and they want to give me more information about life and God and all that kind of stuff. And uh, me being pretty open-minded, I was like, yeah, I will, I will have a chat with you. So I'm actually meeting them today um, and yeah, get some more info on that Mormon life. So that's gonna be really fun. But first, I need to go to the gym, sort this, this mess out. Jenna Marbles does it all the time in her videos where she's like, whoa, uh, whoa. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much fun with this camera. Hell yeah. Okay, let's do this. Whoa. I was trying to do my makeup after the gym session and I did upper body and I could barely do my mascara. It was hurting my shoulders so much. But it was good. And I am running late for Jesus. Because, uh, yeah, we've got a date. Actually, let me turn this off a sec. Just to explain before I see the guys what actually happened when I first saw them. So I was walking down the road with my beats on, enjoying my music. And then I got stopped by these two guys. And I could see that they had Bibles and they were dressed smart. And I was like, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm not ready for you yet. Like, what is, what is this? And But I, I took my headphones off and they asked me, oh, what does music mean to you? So I, I gave some spiel about what I thought music was and I said to them, well, what do you think? We just started talking about music and then we started talking about God. And um, yeah, it was really, it was really interesting. They were kind of saying a lot of stuff about how um, you know, God will try to communicate with us in lots of different ways. But, you know, but if we don't ask for God to be in our lives, it won't be as easy to see where he's communicating with us, if that makes sense. And, um, yeah, I kind of resonated with that. I was like, yeah, fair enough. Like, if I'm blocking him out or it or whatever this life force is, then, um, yeah, how do I know that it's there or not there? So strange. I'm going to tell them when I see them, but... I had this conversation for like over an hour and I went away and obviously I was thinking about it and then I was texting my friend because my car keys they're not working at the moment so I've just been you know beep, 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 pretending to lock my car on but actually it doesn't lock <laughs> it legit doesn't lock and I went to go get my car key to do the pretend oh, I'm unlocking my car and then I realized oh I don't even have my keys I must have just left them in my vehicle. So I was texting my friend saying, oh, lol, I'm like, I've literally just come back to my car and my key's just sitting on the seat. Like, anyone could have stolen my car. And then he said, out of nowhere, someone from heaven must be looking down on you if there is one. Like, what? It was just so strange like why would he say those choice of words and i even asked him another time i was like why did you say it like that and he said i don't know i don't know so it honestly was i know it seems like a small thing and you can read into stuff but it just got me that day who knows friends who knows but we are going to find out more i'm going to ask him lots of questions and yeah it's going to be really interesting jesus man interesting stuff safety <laughs> Oh, it is blowy today. Oh my goodness. Let's see if we can spot them. I think they're there. Approaching God. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. How are you guys doing? Okay, so we have. Rhett and actually I didn't even get your first name. It's Dallin. So I was gonna ask Rhett and Dallin. Actually, would you prefer do you prefer like elder as or is it cool if I use your first name? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna ask the elders how yeah, it sounds cool, right? Like like an ultimate band. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna ask them how they got into what they're doing because it's pretty awesome that 
they're super young and they've given up, you know, jobs and what have you to do this full time and promote God. So, um, yeah, I'm really curious to see um, how they actually found God and, and how it all happened. So, who wants to go first? So, I guess I was, I was you know, born into a Christian family. Okay. Um, you know, my, my parents believed in God and it was kind of like, you know, when you, when you grow up in a Christian family, you kind of just follow your, your, you know, your parents' footsteps. But it wasn't until I, you know, I reached the age of um, about 20, 21, that I really wanted to find out for myself if this was true. And so what I did is I, I started to, to read a book, uh, and that book was the Book of Mormon. And as I read the Book of Mormon every day, and, and really I, I, I saw a difference in my life. I saw that, you know, my life was um, a lot happier. It was more fulfilled. Um, through reading that book and also through through praying to God. And so as I did those two things every day, I noticed a complete change in my personality and my life. And I could, you know, trace that back to having that belief in God. It's because of God and because of this book um, that I, I'm where I am today. So I wanted to share that with other people and that's that's why I'm here. When you were growing up, were, were your family Mormon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. right, okay. But yeah, as I said, you know, we kind of get to a point where you have to, you know, decide for yourself if it's really what you want. Yeah. And and yeah, I came to that conclusion that yeah, that you know, God has, has helped me where I am today, and and it's just made me a happier person. It's really brought my family and I closer together. And That's I want to. That's really nice. Yeah, I want to share that with other people, so that their families can be closer together as well. Yeah. Okay. So. Tell me your story. My story. So I was raised up in the church, but similar, I I got to a point where I needed to know if this was really worth things. If I was going to come out for two years, and you know I didn't know where I was going to go, somewhere in the world. And so really, as I took it serious myself and I started to pray, I did so with with real intent. I really wanted to know. That is when I could see. Um, we often look at things in a world where it's first you have to see it and believe it. Mm -hmm. But I, I personally know that as I believed, I was unable to see that God is there and He's in my life. And that's why I'm here. Have you both had a moment where you actually feel like God has spoken to you? Like, you know people talk about revelations or maybe like how He texted me or whatever. But have you had a definitive moment like that or has it been more gradual? There's been times when I... You know, like been sitting in church, and I've had like a a real burning sensation in my in my heart, in my bosom. Wow. And and that's really like you know what we what we share with people is you know the way that God communicates to us is is different. Um, so we all you know feel different things. Um, but that's one of the I guess the, the feelings that we can feel is that burning sensation. What would you say are the biggest differences between um, being a regular kind of Christian and specifically being a Mormon? Yeah, the obvious difference is the Book of Mormon. Okay. Um, you know, we're the, the only church. Yes, this is a good shot. <laughs> so we're the, we're the only church that you know has the Book of Mormon. A lot of things that set us apart are, are maybe you know different health codes that we live by. Um, okay. So. For example, you know, we, we don't drink tea or coffee, uh, we don't okay. drink alcohol, we don't um, smoke tobacco, do any drugs. Is it in a bit to feel pure? Yeah. yeah. Because we know we believe our, our bodies are, are gifts from God, mm -hmm. and so like any gift you should treat it well. I, I believe that in a way, but it's not even a religious thing, it's yeah. just that, yeah, like it's good to have respect for your yeah. body and for life because there's so many people that just don't have that privilege. Yeah. Is it similar with kind of just general Christianity where you believe in sort of heaven and hell um, and sort of the actual s stories of the Bible or is the Book of Mormon just com completely different? So we definitely read the Bible, you know, we believe the Bible is the Word of God and uh, we just believe the Book of Mormon is a second witness um, to, to add to that evidence that, you know, Jesus Christ really did live. But in regards to like heaven and hell, I guess we, we believe a little bit different to, to what mainstream Christianity believes in um, because we believe that the church that Christ established um, actually fell away and was lost. And so, you know, the plan that, that God has for us doesn't just end with a heaven and hell, but really there's there's much more to it than that. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that, you know, that God has, has, you know, He has different places for us to go, not just, uh, you know, one option or the other option, um, but he, He's created, you know, kingdoms of glory for all of His children. And so, you know, we believe that, you know, that there isn't just uh, that heaven and hell. All right. So Farah, so tell me a little bit, a bit about yourself. So do you have a belief in, in God yourself? And if you do, how did you come to that belief? Um, 
Yeah, it's really interesting. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily God, um, but I do feel like there is something more than ourselves. Because at the same time, my logic does kick in and I do think, well, are we arrogant or naive enough to think that there is like that we actually have that much purpose like maybe we're just here as animals just doing our business like are, are we that profound if you know what I mean all the things that you have put all together as God or, or your religion I kind of do in a more fractured way so as I was telling you before so I have a jar and um, where I write down thoughts of gratitude and um, every sort of like I don't know, two or three days, and I pop it in there, and then I might return to it. So that is almost, almost kind of like prayer, isn't it? Where you're taking time to be thankful for what you have, um, and I find that really beneficial. Would you like to read a scripture for us? Yeah. And it talks about what you're saying, how we can come to know if God is there. For those who are watching, in the back of the Book of Mormon. He's <laughs> getting so into it, I love it. I know. So, quick, quick history. The Book of Mormon, it's an ancient record. It's similar to the Bible. And so basically, this was written by ancient prophets, but not in Jerusalem, on the other side of the world, in the ancient American continent. In this book, it's similar to the Bible. There's prophets, which teach the Word of God and their dealings with God. At the back of this book, there's the last prophet to write in this, which was about 400 years after Christ came to the earth. His name was Moroni. There's a cool picture. He wrote exactly in answer to that question, is how we can know if God is there. It's verses 4 and 5. Ready? And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true, and if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things. It helps. There's kind of three things towards the end of verse 4 how we should pray. So it says, ask with a sincere heart, real intent, yep. having faith in Christ. That's right. So if we ask God with those three qualities, mm -hmm. a sincere heart, real intent, and faith in Christ, yeah. then in verse then below it tells you how you will get your answer. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, you may know the truth of all things. Right. So by the Holy Ghost, which is how God communicates to us, that is how we can know if, you, if it, what you've received, so the book of Mormon, mm -hmm. if it is true. So we were just talking about how I find it so fascinating that the elders can categorically say to me that there is a God and that he lives and loves us and all that stuff. Because how can you um, how can you ignore that if somebody is saying that with such truth? But then I have a question for you guys. So what if you then have people on the other side of the spectrum that categorically say, I don't believe in God, there isn't a God. Uh, all the experience in my life has shown me that there isn't a God. What would you say to them? I would say it would take us back to that scripture we read. That everyone has their own choice. Everyone can choose. That's a gift that God has given us. And so just like a parent, he's not going to force any of his children to to believe in him and to know that he, he's there. But if we go back to the scripture, which I read earlier, which talks about how we can know, I guess my question would be, did, did that person, did they maybe do, do those three things that um, it reads in the Book of Mormon about that sincere heart, real intent, and having faith in Christ. I had this experience before where at uni um, there was, no they weren't even Catholic, they were just um, Christians, but um, I said to them, okay, well, say you had um, person A and person B, they're exactly the same, sort of they're, you know, great people, treat people with respect, they go out and do volunteering work, all like amazing people that God would probably recognise as good people, but one of them goes to church and the other one doesn't. And I was like, why would it be that person A would get to go to heaven and B wouldn't? 
and then they just said, well, you haven't, you haven't absolved your sins, like, therefore you're not getting in. And I just found that, like, crazy, because it's like, well, if God is all-knowing and all-loving, then surely he could look over that slight, you know what I mean? Well, being Mormon, yeah. do you have any um, massive rules like that? Like, you have to go to church, or you, you can't be homosexual, or those sorts of things that, that can be contentious? That's a good question. Um, you know, it kind of comes back to what Elder Muchmore said, is, you know, we all have our agency, we all have free will. Yeah. And that's a, that's a gift that God has given us. Um, and so he, he respects that, and he wants us to exercise that. And so with that, we have to make our own choices. So there's nothing in the church that is compulsory. There's nothing that in the world that's compulsory. Um, because God doesn't force us to do anything. You know, we, we kind of choose and dictate our own lives. But there, I guess there are certain things in the church where if you want to, um, I guess, have, have further opportunities, or um, be able to, to do more things, there are certain requirements or certain commandments um, and rules that you have to live by. Um, and some of those is that, you know, that health code that we talked about with the no alcohol, tea, coffee, you know, in order to, to be able to, to do other things and to be able to, to be open to, to more opportunities, we need to, to, I guess, live all of God's commandments. And on that note, because it is contentious, what, what are your specific views on things like homosexuality and just diverting from heteronormativity? Yeah. So, I guess, you know, in the Bible, it, it, I guess it talks about, you know, it says that homosexuality, homosexuality is a sin. Um, but personally for me, um, I feel that, you know, we all, we all have different trials, we all have different challenges in our lives. And what may be a, a challenge for, for some person is not necessarily a challenge for another person. A challenge that I'm struggling with, sorry, um, you know, are, are different to what, you know, maybe someone who is homosexual um, struggles with. When you say challenge, do you mean like the social challenge because it is, it's not yeah. always accepted? So some people, not, not in the sense that homosexuality is categorically wrong, but just yeah. the pressures that are put on people to be a certain way in a relationship. And then if you don't fit that, mm. that's your trial that you have to go through. Is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah, you could, you could definitely say that. For example, like in, in the church, you know, we, we have a, another law. It's known as the law of chastity. And so that prohibits any sex relations outside the bonds of marriage. Okay. And for, for somebody that may be a challenge you know, to be you know, clean and chaste mm. um, before they're, they're married. And so that necessarily isn't a bad thing though. It's not a bad thing to, to, to want to have a sexual relationship with, a, with a, another person, mm. you know, with someone of the opposite sex. But you know, it needs to be done within the bonds of marriage. Okay, I've literally taken up so much of their time. We've been chatting for ages. but. I have the Book of Mormon. Who would have thought I'd be walking away with the Book of Mormon? So, guys, any final thoughts to let people know, or...? Well, you ever see people wearing these name badges? Just... Wait, wait, wait. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! That's okay. right. Just... Wait, it's not gonna focus. <laughs> it's not gonna focus. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you see anyone wearing these name badges in the street, definitely stop and say hello, and... Yeah, give them some of your time because it will make a difference in your life. We're worth it. Cool. You're worth it. L'Oreal, you're worth it. out. <laughs> wow. It's a bit of a, bit of a mind blown thing. Yeah, it was really nice of them to meet me and super sweet that I now have a, have a Mormon book. When we were off camera, they were talking about how they want me to sort of have a couple of goals. So maybe just like praying every night just that sort of stuff and yeah I'm definitely gonna give it a go there's no harm in it but yeah and then they were saying like oh uh, you know you can work towards getting bapt baptized like how does the second April work for you but I said to them like it's just a bit too soon because there's just a lot of things I need to process because yeah I like it religion man it's uh pretty crazy so yeah, that's kind of the end of it really. I'm gonna definitely do a little bit of reading and uh, see how that goes. But yeah, I'm gonna head back to the car now. Right, thanks for watching and uh, see you very soon. Bye!